John Denton with us. Uh, what's going on, John? How you doing this week? I'm doing great, Bernie. Ready to ready to crank it up. Uh, you know, Monday. I think Monday's going to kind of be the first day that a lot that just about everybody's in in spring training. Uh, you know, most of the Cardinals have already been down there for for a couple of weeks, few weeks already. So, ready to crank it up and get to Jupiter. Hey, I'm going to just uh, I'm going to ask you one that's not like a top of the list question, but. Ivan Herrera has been tearing it up in the the, uh, the Caribbean World Series, and I, and I did not um, I did not uh, check anything today, but I know people have been really been a lot of stuff's been written about him and said about him how impressive he looks. How do you think Ali uh, is going to divvy up the catching? The because he he can use Contreras at DH as he did, uh, you know, 30, 40 games or so last year, something like that. How how do you how, how do you suppose he'll get? Uh, you know, a good amount of playing time to Ivan Herrera that would continue to, you know, get him readier and readier uh, to be a, a kind of a full-time major league catcher. Yeah, you know, I think that was kind of a below-the-radar really good move the Cardinals made. You know, losing a guy like Kisner was not easy because he's so likable in the clubhouse and all the pitchers loved his preparation. But, you know, they, they know that this kid's ready. Uh, Herrera has, has done everything he can do at the minor league level. They didn't want to break his spirit. They didn't want to, you know, set him back. And and he's ready to play. And I think there's a good chance he's going to play three days a week. I think they're going to find a way, uh, you know, if he's better defensively, if he's better calling games, and, and, you know, that's what they've they've ridden him hard on. They want him to be better. They want him to be more prepared, you know, calling pitches, calling games. But his bat, he's, he's going to hit, Bernie. I, I'm confident he's going to hit. He, you know, he really hit the ball well last season. Uh, I watched some of the game the other night against Puerto Rico. I mean, the kid can hit the ball. He can he can hit it to all fields. He can drive it in the gaps. Uh, it's impressive to see how well he's played, and, and I really think he's going to play three days a week. As, as long as his defense is better, as long as he builds that rapport with, with the pitching staff, I really think he's going to get a lot of chances back there. Yeah, last season, because I looked it up, um... Contreras uh, played uh, 90 games as a catcher, but he was in the lineup 30 times as a DH. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And I think I, with Yadi or Molina around, you know, he'll not only help Contreras, but he'll continue because he's helped Ivan Herrera a lot. So that's a pretty good setup mm-hmm. right there. Um, but Ivan Herrera is pretty exciting. You know, John, I, I thought in a way um, – when they brought up Herrera to the major leagues for the the first time, they were in Boston. I think it was 2021, um, or maybe it was 2022. I'm sorry, John. Um, when they brought him up, like it was almost like they couldn't wait to get him out of there. And it's because the pitchers, as I was told later, the pitchers were complaining, "Oh, he's not ready. Oh, he's not ready." Well. When Yadi Molina's been your catcher the whole time you're in the major leagues, yeah, Ivan Herrera they ain't ready, and who is ready? And mm-hmm. it was a little bit of foreshadowing of what they did to Contreras a year later, you know? So they, <laughs> it's just funny to me because it, the, the same kind of thing happened to Herrera, and, you know, now mm-hmm. hopefully that's all behind them. It's got to be. Yeah, you know, I, I think the Cardinals said that, hey, they took for granted all the things that, that Yachty took care of, that, you know, Yachty had this relationship and Yachty had studied and he had this uh, this knack for, you know, uh, what pitch should be called at certain times. I mean, Wayno has even mentioned that, you know, there was times where he would Yachty would call for a pitch that nobody would be expecting. It made no sense to throw it there, but that was part of his genius is, you know, he caught hitters off guard that way. And, you know, the, the the franchise took for granted how good they had it for 19 years with, with that guy behind the plate. And, you know, it really was unfair, the the blame that was heaped on Contreras last year. I mean, he, he handled it with grace. Uh, I give him a ton of credit for, 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 you know, for overcoming what he did. And, you know, he was one of the best hitters in baseball the second half of the season. I think he had the second best on base percentage, the second best OPS percentage, only to – only to Shohei Otani. So I give Contreras a lot of credit for overcoming, you know, all the blame that was heaped on him early. And like you said, uh, Herrera got a lot of that grief in 2022. <laughs> he's not ready. He's not ready to handle pitchers. But, I, you know, I think the kid has grown up. I think he knows now what he has to be better at. And he, he's going to hit. If he catches well enough, he's going to play three or four days a week. 
John Denton with us. Uh, and I, I was looking at projections this week, a lot of projections, because a lot of the systems have been out with their 24 projections and the ones that I pay attention to. And, you know, there, there have been um, – uh, Clay Davenport is a pioneer in the field. I always look at his site because he's – I, I could still consider him, you know, among the very best. His projected numbers for the Cardinals rotation are actually pretty good. You know, they're solid. You know, they're certainly better than, you know, what we saw last year, a lot better. And I'm not saying any of these guys are, you know, uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to have, you know, they're going to have a couple guys get Cy Young votes. I'm not saying that at all. But, but it, it seems that um, the, the, the projections are, are on the positive side. But the one guy that I think we all wonder about, and it isn't Lance Lynn because we know what he's going to be working on, but Stephen Matz and just his availability. And I know you've talked to him a lot, and you've, uh, you've been able to get to know, you know, form um, solid impressions of him, the kind of guy he is, competitor he is. Uh, in your view, is this the year where he can get out there and make 25, 30, 32 starts? I mean, what has he been doing that would give you, as a neutral party, some confidence that this would be the year that it sort of comes together for him? Yeah, you know, Bernie, the Cardinals have talked to him about changing his workout routine. You know, they don't want him being, you know, this muscular guy. They don't want him being, I mean, you know, no lie. Steven Matz is one of the best athletes in all of baseball like last year him and jordan hicks would have been the two best athletes on that team steven matz can do anything i think steven matz hit a home run in the world series game or his first his first major league game he hit a home run he had a couple hits in the world series one time like he is a phenomenal athlete but they want him to be you know they don't want him to be this strong guy who comes in all tight they want him to be able to make 30 starts and they want him to be able to be more durable and so he's made changes with his off-season routine. Steven's one that, you know, it just doesn't add up. He's such a good athlete. He has better stuff than most people realize, but he tends to let one thing kind of knock him off his game. He loses his confidence mid-game. He loses his confidence in pitches that he won't throw uh, throughout a game. So if he can ever put it together, he could be that guy who won 15 games in 21. You know, that got him the four-year deal in St. Louis. They really need, you know, Stephen Matz could be one of these guys who he could be the one of the keys. He could be one of the swing guys of this season. If Stephen Matz is, you know, if he's if he makes 12 starts and gets demoted to the bullpen, it could be bad for the Cardinals. But if he's a guy who can make 30 starts and say he goes 12 and 8, uh, you know, that could be a really a, a big swing factor for the Cardinals because they feel like they're they know what they're going to get from their other four pitchers. They just, you know, they'd never know really from start to start what you're going to get from Steven because he can be electric and dynamic and then he can be a guy who can get knocked out after three innings and giving up eight runs. They want to know what they're going to get from him this season. John Denton with us, our friend from MLB.com. So the Cardinals brought in seven relievers uh, one way or the other this uh, offseason and uh, we, we've discussed them quite a bit, you know, and there's uh, there's a couple of guys you really like. We all really think you know, highly of, you know, Kettridge and, and Middleton because they've, they've got promising track records. But some, some of the guys that are just sort of now, uh, you know, nearing that, that, that major league duty uh, for the first time that figure to be in the mix. Um, number one, the guys that they brought in that aren't, aren't the two established guys, uh, who do you think's got the best chance to make a positive impact? And then do you also think part of the Cardinals' bullpen strategy – from the front office standpoint, is that rather than just go kind of sign a, a major league reliever who's still out there who may not be anything special, but he would be depth, do they think their relief pitching depth will be um, – some of that will come from guys down on the farm, even if they're starting pitchers like Roby, Graceffo, and, and so on? Yeah, they Bernie, they really upgraded their, their minor league talent with at the deadline. You know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily like – the hole that they got for for some of the trades, but I mean, if you get to JC, and then you get uh, Roby in, in the Jordan Montgomery deal, that was a heck of a haul. That that surprised a lot of people in baseball that the Cardinals were able to get that for Jordan Montgomery. Now he pushed them over the top and helped them win a World Series, but that was a really good haul for the Cardinals. And I, and I do think the Cardinals feel like that they're going to have the Kloffenstein kid. They're going to have. Uh, Roby, they're going to have some of these guys coming up that they they really improved their their minor league depth, and they think one or two of those guys are going to hit this year, 
Um, you know, as far as the bullpen guys, they signed a lot of guys with not a lot of major league experience. I am eager to see Nick Robertson pitch. I mean, that, that kid is a phenomenal athlete. I don't know if you saw the video. They were at uh, Missouri State, I think, doing a, uh, a Cardinal Caravan down there, and he takes two steps and dunks the ball with his left hand. Uh, he is a super, super talented guy, very athletic guy, good stuff. I've heard a lot of good stuff from him from a couple of Boston writers. I think he's one of those guys that doesn't have a lot of major league experience, but he could be a guy who could who could hit for him. You know, the 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 kid they got from Seattle, uh, Riley, uh, yeah, he, uh, Riley O'Brien, O'Brien he, yeah, experience. Uh, you know, there's a couple of guys that they got that have a lot of big league experience, but I do think that Robertson kid has has a chance to to be effective because he's such a good athlete. Do you anticipate any other roster moves? Um, because there still are people out there, but I don't know if they're really uh, that that enthusiastic about bringing anybody in. I mean, have you been able to pick up any clues on that? Yeah, you know, the one thing I'm wondering is do you still need another middle infielder? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot on the line with Mason Wynn if – you know, if Mason Wynn goes, comes to this camp and struggles, which I don't think he will, I, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to come to camp and have a have a camp like he did last year. I think he knows what's on the line. Um, but but if he struggles, then you're talking about you know moving Tommy Edmond back here, uh, moving him back to to uh, center field, moving him from center field back to shortstop. I do still think they need another middle infielder in the mix. Uh, they signed Buddy Kennedy. A guy who, you know, I don't know if you know this, Bernie, his grandfather was Don Money. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I remember uh, him. He's a guy I remember him. Really yeah. Good, um, really, really good guy. They got him from the A's. But I do still think they need another middle infielder. But, you know, right now it's going to be fringes. They're, they're not going to be key pieces. You know, we talked the other day that, you know, they weren't going to spend the big money. They weren't going to spend the $9 million that it took to get Hector Neris, but they were willing to spend the $6 million it it took to get – to get Middleton so you know right now I think they're just looking at the final touches uh you know maybe operating on the edges maybe you get another middle infielder but I think this pretty much is the team they're going to take to take to Jupiter next week John you this be this is your third year on the beat and you know you saw the um you saw the first season of Ali Marmol and then it was it was uh, last last spring training was 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 hectic because of the WBC and you know people coming and gone different reporting dates after the WBC depending on when their their nations got eliminated it it seems that um you, you know they they the cardinals had such a lapse in fundamentals and we know that their pitching was a mess and i don't know how much that disrupted routine had to do with that but i'm sure it had something to do with it and do you anticipate a different type of camp this year with maybe with the fact they have everybody there, they can really get to work, and it and it can be a constant thing rather than, you know, waiting on people to arrive. I mean, what do you think? I I think that's got to help them, right? Yeah, I, I think the WBC totally had a a disruptive factor last year. You know, I mean, did did every team in in baseball have players to go to the WBC? No doubt about it. Yes, they did. But the Cardinals had eighteen of them, and they had their first baseman and their third baseman and their a couple of their top line starting pitchers go so they were like really hit hard by primary guys and you know it had a big effect it, now did it give mason Wynn and jordan walker and some of those guys more opportunities yes but when you don't have uh, paul goldschmidt around every day when you don't have nolan arenado around every day you, there's going to be slippage you know and I, I think those guys wore down late in the season because they poured so much into being ready and wanting to win that gold medal for team usa i think it had a had a big effect and uh, this, this Bernie this is a big camp for the Cardinals yes they have most of their roster set most of their starting lineup is set but this team needs to know like 13 of their first 16 games are against teams that made the playoffs last year like the first four are against the Dodgers and it's going to be a show hey love fest and then you got to go face <laughs> Mike Schilt for three games the guy who lost his job to the Cardinals and then you come home and you get the Marlins the Phillies and the Diamondbacks in a row, like, this is a tough, tough start. So they're going to have to come out of spring training ready to go, ready to, you know, they're going to face a very tough start. And 
that this team can't afford to get behind the eight ball like they did last year. You know, it it won't be good for Ali. It won't be good for Mo. It won't be good for the Cardinals if they get off to the horrendous start. And they're going to be have to be ready to play because that start is really tough. John Denton, uh, one one more thing for you. It's just uh, we have talked about a couple of the young guys, but I want to ask you when you know as camp's just about to open. Um, who are you looking forward to, to seeing, uh, to watch, to monitor? You know, guys that maybe will be in their first big league camp or guys that maybe will be on the verge of um, being in consideration during the season for a roster spot. Who's on Who's on the Denton list? I think you at the top of that list would be Victor Scott. I mean, Bernie, he is a superstar in every respect. I mean, super intelligent. Two parents were both track stars in college. Uh, He said himself, he's like, I used to be a track guy who played baseball, but now I'm a baseball player who can, who can, who can run a little bit. Um, If, if Tommy Edmonds wrist is not right, if they have to hold him out quite a bit in spring training, that's going to open up a lot of opportunities for Victor Scott. And I think Victor kind of knows, Hey, I can play my way onto this roster. If I can go out and show this team what I can do. And, you know, he won a gold glove last year. He stole 94 bases last year. He went to Arizona and had one of the highest on base percentages in Arizona and I backed it up. So, you know, if, if Tommy maybe can't, you know, can't hit right away, if, if Tommy's out for a lot of spring training because of that wrist, it's going to give Victor Scott a lot of opportunities. And, you know, Jordan Walker played his way onto the roster last year. Can Victor Scott do it this year? Uh, you know, he's a guy who's, he, he has Vince Coleman's number in his phone. They talk a couple times a week. He's, you know, picks his brain all the time. He knows Vince Coleman's history. Uh, the the kid is, has gotten superstar written all over him in every respect. Uh, smarts, toughness, uh, speed. He gets on base. Uh, he could get a chance in the spring training. You know, like I said, if Tommy's out, Victor Scott could, could really open some eyes in the spring camp. Yeah, and we hope, and we'll talk about him next week. Uh, I think everybody hopes that this is the spring where Dylan Carlson really shows that, you know, he's kind of turned turned whatever corner that is he needed to turn. But because uh, he's he's with you're right with Edmund with that wrist. And we don't know exactly what to expect there. You can't assume anything. You know, Dylan Carlson becomes a, a much more important player in that camp. So that's another guy that I think, all you know, everybody's going to be monitoring throughout. So maybe this is the year. John, love having you on, man. I appreciate it very much and look forward to reading everything you're going to be writing from spring training. And I know you'll be writing great stuff and a lot of it. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Bernie. Appreciate it. Take care. Oh, you take care. That's my friend, our friend, John Denton.